itself. Would you mind describing how your father got to come to America? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. When, when my father, you know, Zakhar Kazarian, when he was about 15 years old, uh, his father, who happened to own the property where the spring, the, the, wa the water supply for that village came from his property, so he was pretty well to do. So he decided, uh, he decided to give my father, Zakhar, a horse. And uh, which was pretty young for, uh, in those days, for a person to have a horse at that age. And it had a saddle, it was a nice horse. And he told my father, now, I'm going to show you where there's a gun. So he showed him a gun that was under the saddle. He says, you never touch this unless you absolutely have to. And that was uh, early evening. The next morning, my father got up and immediately took the horse and he ran to where the Turks and Kurds used to uh, hang out. And uh, they used to come and beat up Armenians, those Turks and Kurds. So he ran over there, he took a pistol out, he shot it in the air, he says, never come into our area again, you understand? So then he turned around to leave and as he was leaving, he heard noises and then he felt something on his back. He thought it was a rock hit, him, hit his back. But he kept riding and he had to go through a narrow canyon to get home. As he was going through the canyon uh, on this narrow path, a Turk on a donkey was approaching from the other, from the other end. So they stopped and the Turk said, uh, what are you doing with that nice horse? He said, my father gave it to me. He said, well, you, I'll take the horse, you take my donkey. So he started to do that. My father pulled out the gun and shot him, but he shot him in the leg, which was a mistake. You should have, should have killed him. But he shot him in the leg, and then he, with his horse, he went home. Well, the next morning, uh, the word all over the village was what had happened. So right away, uh, Zakhar's father uh, decided, well, we've got to get this boy out of the country. He said, they'll eventually know who it was and they'll come and they'll, they'll take care of him. Uh, by that I mean they'll kill him. So he immediately uh, got, got Zakhar to one of the ports in Turkey and uh, he took a boat and uh, the boat went to France and then to Armenia, I mean to America. So he was here and of course he had his life here and years later when he was quite old I had occasion to take him to a doctor and they wanted to x-ray his chest. When they x-rayed the chest they found this weird looking bullet in his shoulder, behind his shoulder, all encapsulated in, you know, in uh, calcium and the doctor said, what is this? And my father, he wasn't sure what it was, but he realized it was probably when he shot that gun and they in turn shot back. Anyway, the doctor says, look, at, we better leave it where it is. It's all encapsulated. It doesn't seem to be bothering you. And that was the story of how, how he came to America. Well, thank you very much. Uh, can I ask you a couple questions about my grandfather, sure. your father? Uh, do you remember the year he was born, if he was um, 15 at that time? Uh, he must have been born around the turn of the century, am I correct? I, th I thought it was like 1898, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And he just uh, missed the genocide, didn't he, when he came over? It was right uh, before. Yeah, right. He missed the genocide. Right yes. uh, and... Um, your uh, and your mother, I hear also. Well, my grandmother has quite a story. Listen, where... at the age of five, she watched her entire family tortured, finally killed, and then they hit her with an axe in the neck here and threw her in a little creek. The next morning, she woke up. She was still alive, yeah. and. Uh, and all of a sudden she heard someone else crying. It was a 
a sister of hers who was a year older than her. Well, the two of them got together and they gradually walked from eastern Turkey all the way to Syria. On the way, they saw things that were unbelievable. I mean, the things that they did to the Armenian ladies and men, the tortures, the way they tortured them, the worst possible way you can torture a man, they'd torture them. They'd rape the women, the young women, and then they'd put the rifle barrel up inside the woman and twirl mm -hmm. it around. Imagine the pain. And uh, they were just inhuman. They'd take a, they, they watched him take a pregnant woman, slit the, slit the belly open, and spear the baby, and, walk, and mark it through the street, saying, this is one Christian that'll never see this earth. You know? mm -hmm. So the things she saw, stayed with her all her life. Almost every night she had nightmares. And some of the stories she told, the way the Turks tortured people before they killed them, were just inhuman, you know. And, uh, and because she uh, had nightmares almost every night, when she got a little older and had uh, heart problems, she refused to take the uh, medicine. She was just kind of uh, tired of every night, every night, reliving those things. And finally, uh, you know, she died. Wow. Well, I, um, that's quite a story. Thank you so mm. much, Uncle. Uh, I, I am thankful that they had the courage to uh, have three children here in America and, and have a wonderful home that I remember going to when I was a child. Yeah. And, um, and being a good grandma and grandpa to me. Well, she was thankful for that, and, and she was very happy with everyone. She was helpful with everyone. Uh, I know she loved my wife, Margie, and uh, they often did things together, you know. And uh, uh, during the day, she, she led a good life. She helped people. Boy, she was a strong little woman, you know. Yeah. I was in high school. If she'd get real mad at me, she'd grab me by the ear and take me right to the floor, you know. And, uh, uh, but anyway, she was a fantastic woman, been through a lot of hell, and uh, was a great mother and, and a great aunt and, and uh, just a great family person. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Pardon? Anything else you would like to add? Uh, well, what can I say? My father, uh, you know, he, he was great. He had these old uh, Armenian customs, and he lived by them, you know. And uh, he told us to be home by a certain hour. We had to be home <laughs> at that time. And, of course, I remember when uh, your father, John, took... Uh, uh, Sarah out, you know, and uh, didn't get back till after midnight. He wouldn't let her in the house. Uh, she should have come upstairs where we were living, but John took her to Vegas and married her. <laughs> and uh, uh, the rest of the story you know. But uh, like I say, my father lived by those old customs and uh, sometimes it was pretty tough. I know that uh, you know, when I was in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Everybody, uh, you know, I received a lot of honors. He never once, in my whole life, he never paid me a compliment. Later on, when I asked him, I said, you know, you've never said anything uh, good about uh, what I've done. I said, You're supposed to do those things. When you do something wrong, then I'll tell you, you know. But that was, that was uh, the, old, the old customs from Armenia.